Well, uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is where you are today. Today is uh, Thursday, the 10th of September, 2020. And um, the, the year's racing by, although it's a, it's a year that we've never experienced before, over the coronavirus and all that's happening in the world. And, um, and I really feel God has given us a word today to, uh, to speak and to encourage and to show us how to move forward in this particular day because we are in a situation that we've never been before. And, and uh, this morning, as I, I woke up this morning, and I woke up with the, with the thought of the story where Moses um, stood up on the mountain and when he lifted his hands in the air, Joshua and the Israelites were winning the battle. When he lowered his hands, they were losing the battle. And God woke me with that and he said, you know what, Peter, look at that and let's see what we can learn from that today. And I believe our God is a God that loves us and cares for us so right at the outset. Let's uplift up holy hands. Father, I just pray that you speak to us today. I pray that you speak to us through your word. I pray that you fill us with your spirit, that you set your word on fire, that you set our hearts on fire, that our eyes will be fixed on you, Jesus, that you would encourage us and strengthen us. And whoever's listening to this word today, that they'd be strengthened and encouraged in the name of Jesus. I just so love God. I just cannot imagine life without God. I love the scriptures. I love praying. I love worshiping. Oh my goodness, our God is amazing. We put our eyes on God. Yeah, of course, life is difficult. Listen, listen, okay? Life's tough for me too. I work so hard. I work hard in the business. I work hard and I work with other people. And usually, oh, all right, let's, let's, let's just step back one. Do you ever grumble? Are you one of these people who grumble at the people who grumble? <laughs> They're a bit like me sometimes. People, you know, being a, an employer and having employees working uh, for me and with me and together as a team, there's always somebody who's going to be moaning about something and grumbling. Well, this is not right, or that's not right. You know, there's there's too many skies on this hide, this ladder. This sewing machine's not working. This isn't right. You know, always something not right in the workplace. It's too untidy now. Who's put this here? And who's put that there? And why have you done this? It's always, always too much. Flip it out. Why have you ordered all this? You know, there's always something, someone grumbling. And uh, I think if you're a living, breathing person, <laughs> you have an ability to grumble. And you have grumbled, and you do grumble. And so what do we do in our grumbling? Well, in Exodus chapter 17, okay? To be honest, chapter 16, you flick back. Exodus is the second book in the Bible, and we're going to look at that today. <clears throat> and it's really the story of, of the, uh, the journey of the Israelites. Human beings like you and me, out of Egypt, and God's journey with them. And the main lesson that God wants them to learn is to depend on him. The main lesson God wants you and me to learn today in our lives, in our situations, learn to depend on God. Learn to pray, learn to trust, but learn to depend on God. And this is our main lesson today. And uh, we can pick up uh, this lesson, like I said, in the second book of the Bible in Exodus, now, Exodus chapter 16 as a time where the people were grumbling. <laughs> and I don't know, you know, I think if I'd have been there and I think if you'd have been there, you'd have probably been grumbling also. So they were grumbling, they didn't have any food to eat. And God said to Moses, listen, I'm going to send them meat and I'm going to send bread. And he sent them meat in the evening to eat and he sent them bread. They called it manna in the morning. And God told them that, uh, you know, to collect just enough for each day just enough and uh, there's a lesson in that about hoarding things up sometimes we we store things up and hoard things up uh for next week or for the week after you know like remember the coronavirus the start of this how many people hoarded toilet rolls can you believe it <laughs> they just couldn't find toilet rolls anywhere i know uh people hoard things people get afraid and uh, and what god taught the israelites in, uh, in this, uh, of the sending of the bread and the, the meat, he said, just collect enough for each day. Of course, there were those hoarders amongst the Israelites that collected more than enough. You can read all this in chapter 16. 
They collected more than enough and guess what happened? When the morning after they came and they looked at their, they'd collected enough for two days. So enough for say Monday and then they collected enough for Tuesday. They'd hoarded it. When Tuesday morning came and they looked, it was full of maggots and it stunk because God wanted them to rely on him and not store things up. And God wants us to walk with God and when God wants to journey with God and rely on him for, for him to guide and lead us. So anyway, uh, the Israelites, they learned a lesson there. And then uh, we, we come into chapter 17 and in chapter 17 it says, the whole community, they set out from the desert of sin. Traveling from place to place that the Lord had commanded, so God was guiding them, teaching them where to go. And then they came to a place called Rephidim. And it said, there, there was no water for the people to drink. So, okay, we've got food now. We've got meat. <laughs> we've got quail butties, meat and bread. We've got that. But now who knows that when you eat something, after eating something, you want something to drink. And so they came to this place, there's nowhere to drink. So verse two, it says, so they quarreled with Moses quarreled and grumbled give us water to eat to drink they said give us water to drink and Moses said what are you quarreling with me for why do you put the Lord to the test what can I do but the people were so thirsty for water that they grumbled against Moses complaining to Moses they said why did you bring us up out of Egypt well so that we can die of thirst in this desert what is wrong with you us and our children and our livestock that we're all thirsty we'll all die of thirst what have you done? Why have you brought us here? Moses cried out to the Lord. You can imagine Moses thinking, oh no, oh no. Why are you grumbling at me? And Moses thinking, what can I do? Where am I going to get the water from? You, 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 you're grumbling to the wrong person. I don't, I'm, I'm not in charge of the water. You can imagine poor Moses. And so Moses, he must have went away, he went away to, to be with God, left the people. And he said, what am I to do with these people, Father? What am I to do, Lord? They're almost ready to stone me. They're going to kill me. They were so angry and so grumbling. You know when people grumble and then somebody else grumbles? Have you noticed that it starts to stir up and it gets worse and somebody else grumbles? And so they make the matter more difficult. They make it worse and worse. And all of a sudden you've got everybody grumbling at you and you're trying to say, well, well, no. Oh, what example could we use? <laughs> we could use this example, couldn't we? They've no water to drink. They've no, they're so thirsty. And if every one of them is feeling the same way, thirsty, they're going to be grumbling at Moses. I wonder if Moses felt thirsty. Who know Moses felt? Anyway, they said, why are you complaining? And then he said, the Lord answered Moses. And he, the Lord speaks. And, and there's a lesson that God, God answers us. He speaks to us. The lesson to learn is that God wants a relationship with human beings, you and I, on earth. And the Lord said to Moses, listen, go out in front of the people. Take some of the elders of Israel with you. So go and get some of the elders with you so that they're standing with you. I want to take the elders of the people with you. They were, they were ready to lynch Moses. They were ready to lynch Moses. And sometimes we've got to look around and, and we've got to find those people who are a little bit wiser, who will stand with us in our fight in life, and particularly in our fight against us, things that's coming against us. We need that. Take some of the elders of Israel. Take your hand with the staff in which you struck the Nile. Remember no, Moses, he had a staff, and when he struck the Nile, God gave him this staff, and the Nile, uh, the water of the Nile turned to blood, believe it or not. Anyway, he said, I'll stand there before you, he said. God said, I'll stand there before you by the rock of Horeb. And when you strike the rock, water will come out of it and the people will be able to drink. So Moses did exactly what God told him. He did this in the sight of the elders of Israel and he called the place Massa and Mariba because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord saying, is the Lord amongst us? or not and I don't know about you sometimes but I find myself in my life thinking are you there or not God where are you <laughs> where are you in fact just just the last couple of days I mean I've asked if you would pray for my wife Donna uh, she was two weeks ago she was in a, a a car accident someone ran into the back of the car about two weeks ago quite quite a, 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 a large a, a big bang but Donna being Donna, you know, she's very brave as Donna. She don't want to cause a fuss. But unfortunately, as the time progressed, 
the pain in the shoulder and her arm got so much worse and it got worse and it got worse. And so uh, she tried to fight it and people just said, oh, it's only a whiplash. And Donna thought, well, if this is what whiplash is like, fine, I'll cope with this. But you know, it got so unbe unbearable, unbearable. And, and um, not yesterday, but um, today's Thursday. Yesterday was Wednesday. So it would have been Tuesday night. I was praying for Donna, laying hands on Donna, on Donna and praying for her and Donna was crying and she couldn't move. And I was like, where are you, God? It wasn't an answer, I wanted instant, instant, instant. I wanted God to just send his Holy Spirit and heal her instantly, but no, he didn't. And I'm praying and I'm thinking, God, where are you? I wanted it then. No patience, Peter. I don't know if you're like me sometimes. You want it now? No patience. Some things take a little bit longer in our prayer life, in our prayer walk. Anyway, I prayed and, and uh, Wednesday morning came, which was yesterday, and Donna went to the hospital. And of course, I got everyone to pray, everyone around. And this is a great example of what we're gonna look at now, that get people to pray. What situation are you in? You know, there's power. Prayer changes situations. Prayer changes circumstances. Prayer is so powerful, and, and we are encouraged to pray, Jesus said. You know, pray this, the Lord's prayer, our Father who art in heaven, our Lord be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That we need to pray, we need God. We need God, we need to pray. And today, this lesson is for us to learn to pray and learn to persevere in prayer. Get other people praying for you. The Apostle Paul asked, asked the churches to pray for him, to open doors so that he could spread this good news. And we need to pray that God will open doors into our community into the Rossendale Valley, into Accrington and Hindburn, into this area of the northwest of England, into our nation. We should be people that call on the God of heaven, the creator God, and pray, lifting up holy hands, watching what God does. This is what we need to do. So anyway, the water came. And then straight after that, straight after the water came, it says in verse 8, and this is uh, where we're really looking, we're really focusing, but everything else I've just shared is kind of a backdrop. Life is tough, and God knows life is tough, but God journeys with us. And God, uh, you know when we're thirsty, <clears throat> God will bring us water. So verse eight, the Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Remember, they've gone to Rephidim. So they finally got the water from the rock and everything is wonderful and everything's great and they've got peace and they've got meat at night they've got bread in the morning and now they've got water and they saw the water come from the rock well that would say wow you would be dancing and singing when you're praising god that's wonderful in life like that sometimes everything's going great everything's going wonderful but then bang something hits us like right between the eyes a loved one suddenly dies when somebody's ill these are the things that really hit us these days. Or we've just lost a job. Or finance, we can't pay the bills. Or we, I don't know, things hit us really. Or someone, you know, someone who, we, who was doing really well and they were fighting addiction and they were coming off drugs. Suddenly, suddenly something happens to them and they go back into that life of drugs and it just floors you and knocks you out and makes you think, oh, what I, was anything? Was anything worthwhile? Was anything? And life can really hit us between the eyes. You know, it can. And it does. But what do we do when that happens? So they've got all, everything's going great. <laughs> they've got, like I said, they've got food, they've got water. And then in verse 8, the Amalekites came and attacked them. The Amalekites, a strong army of people came because they were going through in, through the land and they came and they saw the Amalekites, saw the Israelites as a threat. And they thought, not only that, they, th they saw them, that they were wealthy. Remember, they came out of Egypt with gold and they had many possessions. So the Amalekites, they wanted them and so they attacked them. And so Moses said, uh, Moses said to Joshua, Joshua, listen, choose some men, some of our men, and go out and fight the Amalekites. Choose some of our men. Are we together in this? Are we united? You know, when we're united, we can call this, this is our brother. This is our brother, Peter. This is our brother, uh, Chris. This is our sister, Donna, or our sister, Janet. 
This is our brothers and sisters. These are our brothers and sisters who are fighting together. So choose some of our brothers, our men, and go out and fight the Amalekites. And he said, Moses said, and tomorrow I'll stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Moses said, listen, this is what I'm going to do. So, okay, so Joshua fought the Amalekites just as Moses had ordered. And there was Moses and Aaron, his brother, and her, and they went up on the top of the hill. So there was three of them, three guys. And he said, Moses held the staff up. And as long as Moses held the staff of God in, this, in the air, he said, as long as he did that, he said, the Israelites were winning the battle. But he says, the Bible says, but whenever Moses lowered his hands, whenever he dropped his hands, the Amalekites were winning. And lift up, what does lifting up hands? They're lifting up holy hands to heaven to prayer. And this is symbolic of prayer. So whenever we pray to our God, you know, our situations that are so difficult in life. <laughs> and I want to tell you something, okay? I've been in business now since 1986, all right? A lot, few years. And the last five or six years, they've been just enough. Just enough. There's been no abundance. There's been just enough. In fact, about two years ago, I once said to my friend Noel, I said, Noel, I'll tell you what it is. If we've actually broke even this year financially, I can only be God. It can only be God. And guess what? We broke financially. We had enough manna for that day. We had enough bread for that year, enough money, just enough. But I wasn't happy with just enough. I was complaining all the time and grumbling. And Lord God, and it took me five or six years of that to learn. I'm telling you, five or six years where we've just had just enough. We didn't have no work and we just had just enough. Five or six years. And then uh, we came to this year, this year, where the coronavirus came, took place. And prior to that, we had no work. And I'm going to tell you now, I thought the business was done. I thought we were done. I thought, that's it, we're going to close the doors. I spoke to our employees and I told them, I said, look, we have no orders. And, and, and I, I really thought we were done. We had, we had nothing. And then praise God for our government. They came up with this uh, furlough, uh, uh, this furlough system. And I'm going to tell you now that God used our government to provide us water at that point in the desert because we were in a desert and God used and God will use anybody he'll use the government he'll use non-Christians he'll use Christians God doesn't mind who he uses as long as it'll lift you up and benefit you and encourage you and so here we've got Moses on the mountain and when Moses has got the stuff up in the air the Israelites are winning. And when he lowers it down, they're losing. And it speaks of prayer. And I'll tell you something now, that the last five years that taught me, drove me to prayer. Every day, Lord, would you send? And, and I despaired. It was like nothing would come. Nothing would come. But then I'd get one or two orders and we'd have something to do. And people were grumbling. So I had the grumbling. What we're going to do? People grumbling. Well, our jobs are not safe. Our jobs are not secure. So if people grumbling on one hand, I'd be trying to find my way through with actually surviving, just surviving financially. But praise God, he brought us through. And this year has changed. And like I said, God used the government, the furlough, and then we've come back to work. And we've got an abundance of work now, and we're working hard. But guess what? We've got grumbling. <laughs> People grumble. They grumble if there isn't enough, and they grumble if there's too much. And stress levels get higher. But we have to pray and trust God. And my prayers lift up holy hands to our Father God in heaven. And this was the situation here. So they're there. And uh, <coughs> like I said, what happened in verse 12 then? So like I said about Moses lifting his hands and when he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. And sometimes the battles were fighting in life. They seem to be winning. The enemy seems to be winning. Because we think we've got there. We've lowered our hands. We've stopped praying. And then it comes again. So what do we do when, when things change again? We start praying again. Let me tell you something. I'm praying and thanking God for the extra work. Not only that, I'm not stopping praying. I'm praying and keeping lifted hands. Lord God, keep sending the work. 
Keep blessing us. Keep leading us. Keep providing for us. And that's what happens. And I need people around me. And Brian uh, has, has, uh, has asked the people of our fellowship, of our church from Aroma. And I've asked other Christians. And I've got people in India praying. I've got my friend Noel and Coral down London area praying. I've got people in America praying. I've got people praying for us as a business. Because when people pray, you surround yourself with people to pray. Amazing things happen. Let me tell you, going back to Donna's story, she had to go to the hospital yesterday and I got people praying, many people praying. And listen, she arrived at hospital. Donna doesn't do doctors. She hates doctors. She arrived at the hospital. She was really nervous. She had to go in on her own. No one could go with her because of this coronavirus. But we were praying. Everybody's praying. And the prayers carried her through into this place. And she went through and she finally went through into A&E. And as she sat in A&E, there were two other people came after her. And they went before her and she sat there thinking, you know, getting worked up on her arm in pain and wondering, Lord, I can imagine, Lord, what's going on? Wondering what's happening. And then they, call, and, and then they called Donna's name. And then she went through, and when she went through, she went through, and this guy walked up to her, and he said, hello, my name's, I can't remember his name, I'm sorry, but I can't remember his name, but this, it was an Asian uh, gentleman. He came, an Asian doctor, a consultant, and he came and he took her in, in not in like, behind the curtain, but in a consultant, consultation room. And she sat down and he said, listen, he said, I've just been, it just so happens that I'm rotted on at this moment, and I'm a specialist, in your condition, in shoulders, and, and how that works. And immediately he looked and he asked her to do a few movements and the pain, he said, now this is gonna hurt. And she, she, she he touched it, it hurt. And it brought tears to Donna's eyes. She was so painful. And he said, straight away, I know what this is. And he knew straight away. And she said, he was just amazing. He was lovely. And she had this red carpet treatment. I call it the red carpet treatment. I've had it when I've gone to India. It's beautiful when people pray for you. When I had my second hip replacement, I had the red carpet treatment because people were praying for you. Never underestimate the power of prayer. Never underestimate the power of prayer. God is an amazing God and God uses everything around us to make it for the best for you and for me. Prayer is powerful. What are you going through at the moment? What battles are you fighting? Have you lowered your hands? Lift up them hands, come on. Let's lift them up to the God of heaven. This is our God. This is our God who we pray to. And what happens when our, Moses, our hands grew tired? He said, Moses' hands grew tired in verse 12. So, so Aaron and um, her, they took a stone and they put it under him. And he said, Moses sat down on the stone. And, uh, and one stood at one side and one stood at the other and they held Moses' hands in the air. And what does that represent? That represents of unity of prayer, praying together in unity. And this is my prayer. You know, in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 4, I've told you before this, which is a great verse. And it's Paul says, I didn't come to you with eloquent preaching. I didn't come to you with words of wisdom and amazing words that transformed your lives. No, I came with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. And I want you to start to pray this. Lord God, if you're listening to this, you're a member of the church at Aroma, this is what I want you to pray. If you're a member of a church anywhere, get people to pray this. Lord God, we need a demonstration of the Spirit's power in our lives. We need a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Would you send a demonstration of your Spirit's power, oh God? And we'll see people drawn to God. We'll see the power of the heavens. We'll see people. But that comes with prayer. And we need to lift up holy hands. And we need to get together. Moses sat on the rock. What does the rock represent? The rock represents solid ground. The rock. Do you remember the story Jesus said about the foolish man built his house on sand? And the wise man built his house on rock. And when the storms came, the house built on the sand was washed away. It was disintegrated. It was washed and down the river it's gone. Nowhere to live. But the man who built his house on the rock, when the storms and the winds came, the rock, the stand, sorry, the house stood firm and didn't move. What are you building your house on? Your house is your life. What am I building mine on? We build it on the rock of Jesus, the foundation stone of Jesus Christ. We lift up all the hands in prayer. Remember the persistent woman who went to the judge, the unjust judge, and she kept going pestering him. Judge, I need some... I want some uh, just, justice. Give me justice. The people coming against me, the people call me all sorts of problems. I demand justice. And the judge said, clear off, go away, woman. But she came back and she came back and she came back and she kept lifting up hands to the judge. And God said, how much more your father in heaven 
who is a just and righteous God. Remember, this judge was unjust. He didn't care about the woman, but God loves you. Pray. Learn to pray. Come on. Let's learn to pray. Father, teach us to pray. The disciples said to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. That's why it was important. Jesus said in Mark, in Mark's gospel, Mark 3, I think he said, Jesus, very early in the morning, whilst it was still dark, Jesus went off into a lonely place to pray. Matthew 6, 6, go into your room, close the door, you on your own, who prays to your Father in heaven that you do not see, but he sees you. Pray, lift up holy hands, hallelujah. Let us pray ourselves into victory in the name of Jesus. And this is what happens when Moses hands grew tired they took the stone they put it under him and he sat on it Aaron and her held up his hands up one on one side one on the other so his hands remained steady till sunset pray steady prayers strong prayers until sunset keep praying what is sunset sunset is the end of a time the end of the day there's a time period so so there's a time set and time is key time is key for you and me because that's how we run our lives but not for God God's outside time. That's why God knows the beginning from the end. That's why it's the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. That's why God sees. The Bible says that God is encircled above, that God looks above the circle of the earth, that God sees everything. The Holy Spirit comes. God isn't constricted by time, but time is designed and prepared for us because God spoke it into being. He's when he said, let there be light. And he put a light up in the sky for the day. And he put a light up in the sky for the night, the moon and the sun. This is our God. And prayer is so powerful. And prayer is all about relationship, communication, inviting God, believing. People who pray are men and women of faith. And you, men and women of faith, who are listening to this video, you are a woman or you're a man or a boy or a girl of faith and you are praying that let that faith rise up within you and pray to the power of the Lord. Pray in the name of Jesus. He is the rock that we stand on. Jesus is the rock. He is the rock that brings water. Remember Jesus, the rock on the cross. He was struck. God struck, man struck the rock, struck Jesus and destroyed him and killed him. But out of that rock, God raised him up again three days later. And out of that rock came the power of the Holy Spirit, the flowing, the outworking of the Spirit. Because Jesus said, I have to go to heaven to his disciples. I must go. So the Father would send the rushing water, the gushing water, the river of life, the Holy Spirit that can be in you and in me today. And that is what sets us on fire. And that is what gives us purpose. And it is he God who provides all things, provides the spirit to enable us to lift up holy hands and to persevere. Take your eyes off your situation or of your problem. Take your eyes off the problem and put them to the solution. Our God has the solution. And together, get men, get Aaron and her to stand by the side of you, to lift up holy hands, to hold your hands, to hold you up in prayer, to lift us up. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Father God, enable us, I pray. Enable us and strengthen us through this word today. So look what happened. So I said, and verse 13. Some people say verse 13, I'm looking for some rubbish. Rubbish, look at this 13. So Joshua overcame the Amalekites army with the sword. Joshua won the battle against the Amalekites. Joshua won the battle against the Amalekites. Moses was praying and God enabled. And then God says this in verse 40. He said, the Lord said to Moses, listen, Moses, I want you to write on a scroll. All this has happened as something to be remembered. And I want you to make sure that Joshua hears it. Now, remember, OK, Moses is the leader of the Israelites. Now, Moses can't last forever. He's going to die just like you and I. Who is going to be his successor? Joshua is Moses' successor. And it was so important that Joshua heard this and God knew. God said to Moses, listen Moses, tell Joshua what happened. Because what, what God is doing is training Joshua. He's training him on how to, how he will lead the people when it's his time. He's training him, he's teaching him, he's learning lessons. And we need to learn lessons off our elders. We need to learn lessons off the people who have been uh, 
walk in this walk we need to look to them and people if you've been walking this walk for many many years and you've got a little bit rusty sharpen yourself get sharp get lifting up holy hands to god remember all the things that god has done and joshua is being trained ready for the next generation ready for when he'll cross over into the promised land this is an amazing training the lord said to moses write it on as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it. Make sure that Joshua hears it. Make sure that Joshua knows that the reason why he was winning the battle is because you were lifting up hands to heaven. In other words, what God is saying to Moses is, make sure Joshua knows from where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. And you know that scripture, I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. This is our God. This is our God. Now we're at 30, half an hour uh, in the, into this, uh, into this, into this um, video. Praise God on this Thursday morning. And uh, what I wanted to do, remember, prayer. How do we pray, you might say? Well, I want to show you, give you a couple of simple tips, okay, for prayer. First of all, Find yourself a candle, they're easy to find. Find yourself a candle and light it. Light that candle. Come on, light. Don't be shy. So, let us light a candle. Candles represent light, okay? So we light a candle. And when we light a candle, it can re represent, it can represent people that were praying for, that were lighting the light, that were illuminating their life with the power of God when we pray. That's what we do. And there's something that I do quite often. As you can see here, I take communion. I've got bread. And when I pray sometimes, I'll come before God and say, Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and when he'd given thanks, he broke it. And I'll pray like this. I'll think this is the body of Jesus broken for me and for all my friends and for all my family, for everyone who works for me, for this nation. God sent his son. He broke him. He struck him to release a life from heaven, the Holy Spirit. And that's when Jesus said, as often as you do this, you remember the Lord's death until he comes. When we remember the Lord's death, what God is saying is he wants us to focus on the Lord's death. Why? We've got to look past the Lord's death. We've got to look at what's to come. Just like with this story here where Moses lifted up holy hands, he needed to pass it on to Joshua. So Joshua's learning lessons. And the lesson of the cross is that God has prepared an eternal sacrifice to forgive your sins and my sins. We invite Jesus into the, our lives. It might be you've never done this. Invite Jesus into your life today. Ask God, if you want this God who, who will lift up your life and strengthen your walk with you, invite him into your life today. And the Lord Jesus, he took bread. When you've broken it, he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And I take this and when I eat this bread, I... I'll take the bread, I need the bread, and fathers, I'm eating this bread, I pray for my family. I pray for my friends, oh God. I ask you to bless them. I pray for everyone at Aroma Church, oh God. I ask you to strengthen them and encourage them. I pray for all my family and all my friends, I ask you to strengthen them. I pray for all those who don't yet know you, Lord. I pray you'd come to know you. And I take communion. The Bible said, as often as you do it. In other words, Keep remembering, keep remembering, keep trusting. Lift up holy hands, lift up holy hands. And after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, this is represents my blood, which was shed for you on the cross. As often as you do this, in remembrance of me, drink this blood and there's power in the blood of Jesus. And so I'll take this, that represents the blood of Jesus. And I'll say, Lord God, just I claim the blood of Jesus over my family. It might be people that you know are the sick. They know that are struggling with illness. There's many, many people might be you bring them before the Lord. 
you bring them before the Lord. I could bring my wife, Lord God, as I drink this today, I bring my wife down and I pray that the blood of Jesus would heal her completely. And I pray you would transform her in the name of Jesus. And then I just drink. I do that. I pray because I desire a relationship with the Father. So don't get tired. When your arms lift and you can't and you've run out of steam and you can't do it, your arms are too weak, I can't do it. Yeah, you can't do it anymore. Can't do it anymore. Find find an Aaron. A brother. Aaron was Moses' brother, as it happens. Lift him up, get him to lift your hand up. Up it goes. Get him to hold it. Hold it. To stand together. So the lesson today is pray. Hallelujah. Be encouraged today. Be strengthened. Be built up. Come on. Stir that gift within you. Come on. You can do this. Trust in God. Never mind looking at the lies that the devil says. Never mind looking back. We're not looking back now. Remember? That manna's gone. Today's manna. Today's fresh bread. Today's fresh bread from the Lord. Hallelujah. Enough for today. Lift up holy hands. Father God, today I pray we bring this day to you. We bring what's left of this day to do. And I just ask, Father God, that if we're at the end of the day, then in the morning, everyone who wakes up in the morning will lift up all their hands and will say, thank you, Lord, for this day. May I walk in it rightly. May you help me fight the battles of God. And as you're fighting the battles of life, don't stop praying. Persevere. There's so much in the Bible about like perseverance. Be encouraged. Be strengthened. In the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.